Hi guys, Samantha from Jason Much Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute beach pendant. So I've just got a ball of souffle white and a souffle robin's egg blue. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to squish those together like so. Just squish them together. And roll it together in a ball and just make sure that the two are properly bonded together. Okay, and that will do. Then I'm just going to take that and I'm going to start to flatten that out. I want it to still be fairly thick. I don't want it to be completely flat. I want it to be big enough to fit my cutter here. Yep, that works quite well. Just going to flatten out a little more. Okay, there we go. I'll check that the back's smooth. Smooth out that spot. Then I want you to take a sculpting tool, you can use a piercing pin as well. And I want you to just go along the water line there, which is what it's going to be. And I want you to just start texturing this, because we want this to be sand. Okay. And then just go the whole way along when you're done with that then just texture the entire uh, white bit. You can use sandpaper if you want, but I find that this uh, has a little more control when you're trying to only do like one side of the texture, and so that's why I use this. Okay, there we go, all textured. Now I'm just going to bring over some pastels. And I'll just scrape out the colors that I think we'll use. Maybe a little bit of this color as well. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to start with the lighter color. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to brush these guys around the surface. Might add some little bits of that light pink color, but I'm mostly going to be working with these two colors. I'm just going to dot that around the textured area, like so, and just go all the way up to the blue edge. Okay, and I'm actually not going to be using a cutter on this, I think I'm just going to leave it the exact uh, shape there it is. So now that we've done that, just gently going to press around these sides and give it just a little shape change. There we are. Alright, now I want to uh, mould in some feet, just um, make it look interesting. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a ballpoint tool, grab the right size one, here we go. And I'm going to just start, do I want them facing away? Yes. Okay. Okay, now I'm at a matching one. There we go. Then I am just going to add in the toes. So I'll make my big toe. And I'll make the small toe there. on the other side. Okay, 
And I'm just going to put this off to the side and I'm going to bring over some souffle mai tai. And I'm going to actually make a little starfish. So I'm just going to make five little balls that are about the same size in color, size and shape, sorry. Okay, and this is what we'll make the uh, arms out of. And then I've just got another one which is slightly bigger, which will be our center. And take each of these and just taper. Before I attach any, I want to make sure that they're all about the same size, like so. Okay. And keep in mind, you can make a starfish any color uh, you want. It doesn't have to be this color. I just like it color. Also you don't have to put starfish, you can put shells on if you want it as well. And I'll just attach those. And I'm just going to push them in and I might flatten them out a little bit as well. Okay, then I'm just going to bring over a ball tool. And I'm just gently going to smooth over those join lines like so. And I'm actually going to use that as part of the design, like so. Put a hole in the middle. And then of course you can make any design you want. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to bring up root blade. Gently lift that up. Okay. And then I'll just use my ball tool to stick it down. Using those little holes that we made, we can stick that down properly. There we go. Okay, then I've just popped it off to the side here. And I'm going to bring over some Primo Jungle. And the reason I'm using Primo instead of Souffle this time is because I want it to have kind of a slightly shiny finish. I don't want it to be matte. Because I'm basically making seaweed here. So just roll out a long thin strand and then press it down. And it's alright if it breaks, that's perfectly fine. You just want long, uneven strands. And then just smooth it down so you don't have fingerprints. Get that out of the way. Okay, and then I'll just break off. pieces like so. Kind of stick them together. And I want it to kind of curl around in on itself like so. And this takes a little bit of uh, fussing to get something that I like. Um, I'm not a big fan of this bit here, so I'll just use a ball tool to gently remove that. Pat those down. Okay. Okay, 
and I wasn't really happy with that so I'm going to try again. So I've done a few strands here. Now I'm going to do them kind of going to just pop them down like so. And I'll use this to kind of manipulate it around in a way that I like. And just use your ball tool to very smooth, gently smooth out that join line. Like so. I just attached one more over there and now I'm just gonna press those down so that they are sticking to something at least. But I do want them to still have that kind of raised effect. Okay. Then last thing is I'm gonna bring over some Primo uh, Sculpey White. And it's important that it's Sculpey because I want it to be thick. Um, if it's uh, Kato, it's not going to do the right thing. There, and I just scoop that out. Now I'm going to just take a ball tool and very gently around the edge there. And I put the sculpey down. Just along the edge, and this is to create kind of the froth of waves. And I'm still going to need to fuss with it a bit after we're done here. I'm just putting it down for the moment. Okay, then just take your uh, ball tool, try to make it your thinnest end, and then you can take a little extra like clip on there to help it out. But just kind of take it and just kind of ruffle the edge a bit so it doesn't look quite so clean. Like so. I'll also put a little bit on here so that it looks like it's got foam on it. I don't want to add too much. Just clean up any spills that I might have. There we go. And I'm just going to take a piercing pin. Just going to drag along the base there like so. And this is why I want the liquid clay to be thick, so it will kind of hold the shapes that I'm uh, dragging it into. Do I want to do another one? Yes, I'm going to do a, probably another two lines. There we go. Now I'm just taking liquid clay and I'm just dragging it in uh, smaller looking ripples, I guess. Going to put this into the oven 
for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature or souffles. There we go. And actually one last thing I want to do is I want to just kind of scrape in uh, some ripples. Then I'll put it in the oven. Okay, and there we go. This is what it looks like out of the oven. So we'll tend to the back later once we have finished up here. Now, this bit is completely up to you. You do not have to do it if you want. Uh, but I want to antique this. So I'm going to start with the sand. And I've got this burnt umber paint. It's just ordinary acrylic paint. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm going to pop that into our sand areas and I'm going to paint the entire surface and then once the paint's dried we can rub that away and reveal the effect. Okay, and then for the ocean I used some true blue paint and antique that as well. So now I'm just going to grab something to wipe the stuff off and just go slowly and I wipe off the top layer first and then when I'm done with that I will bring over some isopropyl alcohol and I'll show you actually what that does now <laughs> let me just spray that onto I think. And that does a even better job of cleaning things up. So if you're having trouble getting paint off, uh, you can use that. Okay. And here is how it looks. So you can see that the blue is just lightly antiqued um, the ocean. And this is a little bit more um, stock, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it turned out quite nicely. So now we're going to take care of the back. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over some 80 grit sandpaper. I'm actually going to put that down. And I'm just going to sand this. Okay, then once we've got that done, I'm just going to take some brown and some of the blue again. I'm just going to work that into the pattern and I'm going to try to keep each colour to its uh, respective side like so and I'll also antique the sides of it as well or well, scratched up the sides of it I mean so I just antique each side with its respective colour uh, and then when that's dried, repeat the same process that you did on the front. Okay, and there we go. So that's basically it. You can now either drill a hole and put a bale in. Uh, you could drill a hole on either side and make it into a bracelet. Uh, you could put a pin or a fridge magnet on the back. Uh, you could even attach a, a bale to the back if you wanted to put a thick cord through. Uh, there's lots of ways that you could uh, use this uh, piece to create a pendant, bracelet, pin, all sorts of ways that you could use it. Uh, I have a lot of videos on the channel showing how to do that, so if you want to see that, just go check out the videos. Um, in this tutorial, I just wanted to show you how to create the uh, actual beach piece. So let me know in the comments below what you thought. If you like the tutorial, please let me know. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.